All right, Mercedes. Mercedes, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Originally, I'm from Thomasville, North Carolina. Small, small, small town. Um, it's like everybody knows everybody. Everybody cousins. <laughs> you grew up with your parents? Um, I actually grew up with my grandma and my auntie and my grandpa. Um, my mama, she actually went to jail when I was about um, maybe five. What did you go to jail for? Um, I don't want to say, but um, she went to jail for maybe about six years or so. Then she came uh, back home. I want to say I was In the middle school at that point. How would you describe your childhood in general? Besides not having my mom around for six years, my childhood was pretty good. Um, I made pretty good grades in school. We went on family trips all the time. Mm, I lived a good childhood. Nothing traumatizing. Your father was out of the picture? Oh no, my father is in the picture. He is? Yeah, um, when my, whenever my mother went to jail, he was still around. He's still around today. Um, we're in, like we're not as close as we should be, but I just call him when I need some money. How far did you in school? Um, I did some college. So uh, I actually went to college in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, Shaw University is a private school. Um, I did freshman year, did my sophomore year, um, got up to my junior year, um, got a boyfriend, uh, which was a bad idea. So whenever I got a boyfriend, I like stopped going to class. I stopped just being in Raleigh in general. I would just be back at home. So eventually I ended up dropping out of college um, about six months later is, uh, well, reverse a little bit. Um, whenever I dropped out of college, I worked a little bit. Um, I tried to get a job. Um, but when I, whenever I was in school a little bit, um, Shaw University, college was kind of hard, but it was easy, but it was hard. I say it was hard financially because everybody had money to do stuff. And I really didn't have money to do anything. so. I decided that I wanted to make some money when I was in college or whatever. This is before I dropped out. I had to rewind a little bit. So um, whenever I was in college for a little bit, um, I decided to uh, get on this website called Seeking Arrangement. <laughs> so I met me like a sugar daddy or I thought I did. Um, it was very, very, very bad. So um, that was my first attempt in college. So then my my first attempt. Then my second attempt, uh, same website, Seeking Arrangement. So I met this guy. Um, he was a great, great, great guy. Um, and he really did take care of me. He paid my tuition. He did everything like um, he was just great. But I still ended up dropping out of school, even though he did all of that for me. I did have a boyfriend at the time. And it's just like, I don't know. I just went with my boyfriend instead. So um, with having a sugar daddy, I didn't have sex with him or anything like that. So I just thought it was okay to still have a boyfriend, but that was really wrong. But, um, I did still have a boyfriend and a sugar daddy. So, uh, like I was saying, I ended so up the sugar daddy was paying for your college tuition and other things too, probably. Yeah. But there was no sex involved. No. So, and that was another fishy thing. I don't know why he didn't want sex, but... <laughs> Um, so I ended up dropping out of school or whatever. So six months later, um, I was working or whatever. I was working at a call center. I was making good money. Um, me and my friend, we worked there together. We were commuting, really, really good friend. Like kind of like my best friend, I call her sister. So uh, we were working or whatever. So one Friday, she's like, uh, my friend's having a party. We should go. So I'm like, okay. So we go to the party or whatever. It's late, it's probably like 12 a.m. We go to a stripper party. We're just drinking, doing all type of drugs. Uh, I ain't gonna say all type of drugs, but just doing drugs, drinking, stuff like that. So 
um, when it came down to it, that night I ended up getting shot. I don't want to go into details about it, but I ended up getting shot. Um, it was on accident. And I want to say the friend that I went there with, I don't want to blame her, but she played a big part in me getting shot. And I want to say like the messed up part about it all, like she never even came to the hospital to see me. Like even after I got shot, she never came one time to see me. And even like the other girls that I was with, they never came. So um, after I got shot, I stayed in the hospital for about a month. Um, after that month was up, they asked me that I want to go to physical therapy. Um, I was in very, very critical condition. Um, I wasn't able to walk. Um, I couldn't bathe myself. I couldn't do a lot of things. Like I had to learn how to do everything over again. So I said yes to physical therapy. I did that, um, got myself back together. I want to say it took eight months all together for me to start back walking just to get back to my normal self. And I also did have a colostomy bag, um, which is, I call it a shit bag. It was like right here. So um, I got that reversed a year later. That was good. Um, anybody who has a colostomy bag, I really, really, really do respect you because that's a lot to deal with. Um, just having a colostomy bag in general, like I don't know what I would do if I had a colostomy bag um, to this day. So um, after I ended up getting myself back together and got my colostomy bag reversed, you know, I was feeling back to myself. I wasn't as depressed anymore. Um, Cause before then, like those whole eight months, I was depressed. I was wanting to kill myself, just things like that. I wasn't wanting to live anymore. I just wasn't happy. So um, after I started back walking and things like that, I just, you know, got my groove back, my motivation. So I was just happy again. So I don't know why the same girls that didn't come see me in the hospital, I ended up going back to go with them. I don't know why, but I don't know. So I ended up chilling back with them, which was dumb of me, because why would you even go chill with some girls that didn't even come see you in the hospital? So I did that. Um, she was basically telling me like she was having like money problems, this, that, and the third. And I'm just like, well, you know, I don't have a job right now. I've been out of work. I was in the hospital and been out of work that whole year. And then I got my colostomy reversed. I've been out of work for eight months. So it's damn near two years. So I'm like, what you trying to do? So she trying to act like she don't know. She's like, well, I got this phone. And I think that the girl who used to own this phone, I think she used to be a prostitute because it's some text messages in there. So. I'm just like, what? So I'm like, all right, what, let me see. Like, what kind of text message is this? Like, what she's talking about? So I read the text message or whatever between her and the person. And she's basically, she's whoever texting back and forth with other people. They're basically, oh, how much, where, in a call, out call, things like that. So I'm just reading it or whatever, just like, trying to like catch on to like the language and like what they're talking about like what does like what does what mean so um after that, I read all the text messages or whatever she's like so what you trying to do so I'm like all right so I was like we can go half on the room so we go half on the room mind you we haven't even created no account or no profile or we don't even know the websites that the the prostitutes be on we don't know nothing so I'm like, all right, we still going to try anyways. The room cheap as hell. We going to give it a go. So we end up getting the room or whatever. So tell me why we end up getting the room. It's the same girl that uh, I was with when I got shot. So we ended up getting the room or whatever. It was like, I want to say it was like 8 p.m. when we got the room. So it's still early as hell. So tell me why. <laughs> We didn't have one person pull up. Like We didn't have one customer. Like we had zero. Like I kind of felt so bad because I'm like, dang, we got to be like the worst, the worst prostitutes in the world. Like this is our first day. And like we like, I don't know if it's her first day, but it's my first day. And like we made zero dollars. Like, can we at least make the room money back? So 
by this time it's like 3 a.m so i'm like damn like we really ain't so i ended up just texting one of the um one of the guys that i was fucking with at the time just to come over he gave me some money so i'm just like thinking in my head like well dang maybe it is not for me or maybe i'm going about it the wrong way so all right so again so <laughs> i try to link up with my other home girl we do the same thing, go half on the room, but this like maybe some months later, like I'm still out of work cause I'm healing from my gunshot wound. Like I can't really get a job cause I can't stand up for long. I can't really walk. I just can't do nothing that I'd be able to do a job that I would normally be able to do. So I was just trying any and everything. So I go with her or whatever, um, we get a room. Same little thing, it's early as hell. Um, but this time it was good because, uh, we had, uh, somebody actually came, but it wasn't for me. It was for her, but I was still happy as fuck because I'm like, I don't know how it worked. Like I still haven't experienced it yet. Like, is this how it's going to be? Like, what the fuck is going on? So mind you, the home credit I'm with now, she know all the websites. She know all tricks. She just know everything. Like she, she know everything. So she got her little first little play or whatever. So I'm happy as hell. I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, it's lit now. So mind you, I still ain't even got no date or whatever. So I'm like, oh yeah. So as time goes on, <laughs> it's like, dang, I still haven't got no date yet. Like, how does this work? Like, what's going on? Like, what am I doing wrong? So the whole time, like, I don't even got no, I don't have no, I got a phone, but I don't know the website. I don't know if she really posted me or not. Like, is she just getting, like, she had two plays and all, that's it. But it's like, I'm like, I got zero text messages and I'm just depending on her. So I'm just like, oh no, fuck that. So I was just like, all right, whatever, cool. So, but it's like, she's so into the game. Like, she's so into the game that like, she, every play, she's still gonna break you off. like. Like after every play, she still gave me some money. Like I didn't do nothing or nothing. She just still broke me off because I guess that's part of the game. I don't know. But um, but it's like, dang, like I feel like she wasn't posting me because wow, did I not have one play? So I was kind of disappointed. I'm like, dang, I can't get no real job. I can't even sell coochie right. Like what's going on? So I'm like, all right, well, let me go back to what I was doing in college. I was like, let me try to find me a little friend. Cause the friend that I had here in Raleigh, but I'm still kind of fucked up from the gunshot accident. So I'm like, I really can't get back and forth to Raleigh like I want to. So I'm like, all right, let me go back on the website. So I finally meet somebody or whatever. So real nice dude on his own company or whatever. Um, treat me right, pay my rent, um, just do everything right or whatever. Um, so I started talking to him, I want to say in 2021, um, I still talk to him now. I have started talking to other people too. Um, I want to say, you know, I probably got like two sugar daddies and then I might, I might have like three, four dudes trick on me every now and then, like whenever I'm bored. Um, but like, as far as like, um, I'm going to say as far as me getting shot and then I didn't have a job and things like that. So I went ahead and got a sugar daddy again because that was my only result. So in between this, I started back taking perks because I had a, a my colostomy reversal. So the doctor prescribed me some perks for my colostomy reversal. So I didn't, I took perks like whenever I had my first gun, gunshot accident in like 2019, but I stopped just fine, like it was fine. So like when I got my colostomy reversal, it's like I was like, I just kept taking the perks, just kept taking them every day, every day, every day, back to back, back to back, back to back. So um, I noticed that I had a problem whenever like I didn't have a prescription anymore, but I was still taking them somehow. Not somehow, but somehow. So um, I know I had a problem then, but I didn't tell anybody. I just 
kept taking them, like trying to find them on the street somehow. So um, I, I want to say I taken the perk every day for the last four years because I got shot in 2019. So I taken the perk every day since then. I'm not going to say one, like I'm probably up to like 80 milligrams a day. Like I take perk 10, so probably about eight pills a day. Um, I tried to stop um, kind of hard to stop taking the perks or whatever. Um, one time it got so bad um, that I went to the hospital for help because I didn't want to like go to my mama or like my grandpa or anybody. I didn't want anybody to judge me or anything. So I went to the hospital. So um, with me going to the hospital, like basically telling them like I'm addicted to this perks. Um, like, I think I'm addicted to it because of my gunshot accident. Like, I just start taking them every day, every day, every day. And I'm just, like, basically crying. Like, I'm telling them, like, I'm addicted to perks. I need help. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. So, um, these motherfuckers, they put me, uh, like, normally you just have, like, one of those gowns. Because I go to the hospital all the time because I have stomach problems. So, usually they just put you in the gown or whatever and everything's fine. So, they dressed me out in, like, this little outfit. It was, like, pants and shirts. So, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm about to go to the crazy house. So, um, I talked to the nurse on the uh, screen or whatever. So, I'm basically crying. Like, I'm telling her, like... I'm telling her what's going on. Like, I'm addicted to perks. Like, um, I haven't been fine since my accident. Um, like, I come to the hospital every other month, like, to see what's wrong with me. And, like, y'all say the same thing. Like, oh, it's just gastritis or you have to take your acid medicine and stuff like that. So, I was basically just crying. Like, I need help. I want help. So, these motherfuckers, they gave me a shot of morphine. So I'm just like, I'm like literally begging for help and y'all give me a shot of morphine. So, but it's like deep down inside, I was happy as fuck. So I just shut up. I just stopped crying and I went to sleep. So they probably released me from the hospital. I want to say that later on that morning, like 8 a.m. or something like that. So, but before they released me, it's like one doctor who came in, who kind of know my situation. I've been shot before. And he kind of like prayed over me. He kind of read my file, like, you're coming in here saying that you won't help. And he was like, the first sign of recovery is admitting that you have a problem. He said, like, you're coming in here admitting that you need help, that you won't help. And they gave you a shot of morphine. So I was, after that, I was kind of disappointed because I'm like, well, if they don't give a fuck, I damn sure don't give a fuck. So when I went home, back to Pop Perks. So um, this was probably, I want to say about six months ago when I first did that, um, tried to get help. Um, nothing happened. And then second time I tried to get help, but this time I went to a family member. <laughs> it's up. I went to a family member. <laughs> I was telling her, like, I was telling her basically, like, what I was going through. And she just offered to buy me some perks. But it's like, I'm telling you what I'm going through. Like, I'm not telling you what I'm going through so you could buy me some perks. I'm telling you what I'm going through so you can get me help or, like, help me or just listen to me. So. <laughs> But you know me, I'm high already, so I just took the money to get the perk, so I went to go get some perks. Um, I won't say what family member it was, but it was really, like, they were really close to me, and I really didn't expect that. Like, she probably honestly thought that I was asking for money or something, but I honestly wasn't. I, I just want her to listen. So um, I ended up just buying perks that day. Well, I was already high, so bought more perks. Got high as fuck. Um, 
it's just like I want to get help bad, but I don't know how. I don't know where I need to start. Um, it's like it's like I got addicted because the doctors were helping me, but it's like. Who's going to help me now? Because I damn sure don't want to get help from them. Like, they gave me morphine when I went for help. Like, that's not help. <laughs> but um, I started talking to my mama about it some more. And she started, like, finding programs and stuff, like inpatient programs. So I'm going to do that a little bit, um, the inpatient programs. Um, because I know if I stay at home and try to do it, then I'm just gonna take a perk again. Um, but if I like go somewhere for an inpatient, then like I can stay there. I won't be able to like, it's in Greensboro though, but I won't be able to go home. Like I won't be able to go to the perk man. Um, like I just won't be around all of that. So um, I said I was gonna go before the summer. Um, I do work now. Um, it's like before then, um, it, it got real bad because before I had found a job, whatever, like it was my first job in three years since I got shot. So I was happy, but it's like, I was a manager, so I had too much power. So, um, like on my breaks, I leave, like the job was already 45 minutes itself. So your break is only what, 30 minutes to an hour. So every day I would leave, like, I don't care, I'm leaving. I, I'm the manager, nobody's here. Like, I'm the only one here every day, so I leave. So I go get me some perks, come back, be high as fuck at work. And then it got so bad to the point where I was leaving every day. And so I, I would get caught though. Like, it would be so stupid because I would get caught. So I ended up getting fired or whatever, so. How old are you now? I'm 26. I got shot when I was 22. Um, my birthday is January 24th. Um, I got shot March the 19th in 2019. I was 22. Um, so. And today you're still, you're still using Percocets. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, I'm gonna try to do. Um, it's getting real bad because when I ended up getting fired, um, now I can see myself going down the same path again. That's why I'm trying to get help. Like um, every day for lunch, I leave, go get me a purpose set. Um, but this time, like I return to work. Like in Moxie, I was returning to work. Like I just be out. But this time, like I return to work. Like I just needed. I just needed to complete my day. Like my day is so much better. Like if I have me a Percocet and a blunt, my day is great. Like no problems, no nothing. And I keep on saying Percocet, but I probably pop two at a time. Like two, two part tens, I pop them two at a time. Probably four or five hours apart. But like now that I'm at work, I probably pop them during lunch. And then when I get off before I go to bed, but it's like, I don't want to do that when I'm on lunch because I see myself going down the same path. Like soon when I do it on lunch, I'm not going to return back to work. Like, so I've been trying to get clean. Um, hopefully I'm going to do the inpatient program soon. I say before the summertime. So hopefully next month is May. So I'll be there either May or June. Um, and you're not doing sex work anymore huh you're doing sex work still i still have a sugar daddy you do yeah um i just feel like i'm always gonna have a sugar daddy because like nobody really wants to have a job like i feel like we work eight hours in the day to make a hundred dollars <laughs> i can make i can make twice three times, four times that amount in an hour. Like, that's nothing. So, um, I do I do have a sugar daddy. I was depending on him full time before I got a job. Like, I was depending strictly on him. Like, he was paying my rent. He was supplying my habit. Like, he was basically doing everything. But it's like, 
I got to the point where I'm picky. So like, even I, even if I was down to my last, like I never get on the website and post my ad and be like, yeah, like I'm about to go do this. Like it has to be like, I'm real picky. Like I have to pick the person. Like they can't pick me. Like ain't no picking me. You got to get picked. So it was kind of tough for me on that end. So like, that's why I try to deal with the same person every time. Like that's why I had the same rotation, the same group of niggas. They just in rotation. <laughs> but um, yeah, he pays my rent. Um, I really just got a job like just to have money because like like that that adds up like my rent like me going shopping my addiction stuff like that i know that adds up so like he just be dried up by then so that's when my job comes in and i just do whatever with those chicks but deep down inside like i don't need that job like that job just for fun that job is to help me not take a perk every hour like i have something to do like it makes me feel like i have something to do with my life like but i hate work like i don't want to be there what's your long-term goal to get a, some other job that you are I like, you're into or, or just to be somebody's sugar baby um i do want to have a long a long time job like um i'm into like interior design graphic design anything to make something look better like that's what i'm into um but it's like you have to go back to school for stuff like that and it's like i'm just so old now like it's like You're i so was old. i was recovering from that gunshot wound like for four years now and it's like life just passed me by like i'm just stuck in the same spot i'm still stuck in 2019 and everybody else in 2023 like i don't know it's weird. Emotionally, what are you going through now? Um, emotionally, I'm depressed. Uh, I try to act like everything's okay. It's not. Um, I don't know. I just keep everything to myself. Like, even my close friends, they don't know me. Like, they probably waiting on this video to drop. Like, like oh my God, I just want to hear about Lick's life. Like, oh my God, I said my name. <laughs> But I just want to hear about Lex's life, um, like stuff like that, because I don't, I'm not, I'm a talkative person, but I don't really, I don't really, I ain't going to say I don't really tell my business, but like, you keep certain things to yourself. So it's like, they just be confused. So like, they probably waiting right now, like, dang, what is she going to say? Like, you don't look like a drug addict. No, that's the crazy thing. Like, it is so crazy because one thing that makes me mad is because people would be like, when I tell them, like, I got a problem, they are like, oh, well, you got shot. So, like, I have a problem. Do, like, do y'all hear me? Like, I said I have a problem. They are like, well, you, you, you're in pain still. Like, okay, but, like, it's different ways to cope with your pain, I'm sure. Like, you don't got to pop a pill to cope with your pain, but I do. What's your biggest regret? What do you wish you had done differently in your life? Um, my biggest regret is hanging out with, uh, like, friends that I shouldn't have been hanging out with. Um, like, you'll see all the signs, like, stop hanging out with that person, or like stop being with that group of people, but like you ignore all those signs and still hang with those people. But like I'm, I'm really not easily influenced at all. Like I'm not influ like I'm not easily influenced. But when it comes down to it, when you hang with those group of people, like eventually, like <laughs> you are like you're gonna act just like them. You're gonna do the same stuff they're doing. Like you just gonna you're gonna fall with them. Like. You could say birds of a feather don't flock together, but eventually they're going to flock together. Like, mm, it's weird. What's your biggest fear now? My biggest fear. It might sound crazy, but um, my biggest fear is dying alone. I don't want to die by myself. Like, mm, which I know I'm going to die by myself because everybody got to die by themselves. But I don't know. I'm scared of dying alone. 
I'm scared to be about myself. Like, mm. you're a little young to be worried about dying. From like the part of town that I'm from, the city that I'm from, the area that I'm from, people die every day. Like young people, and it be over stuff that don't even have anything to do with them. Like, we just did. Does being a sugar baby get in the way of your love life? Me, honestly, it's like whenever I had that uh, boyfriend in college, like he killed everything. Like I blame everything on him. Like I blame the reason why I dropped out of school on him. Like I blame me getting shot on him because if I was at school, I would have never been out there with them hoodlums. You, you, I blame me. You, so you don't take responsibility for any of that stuff? No. <laughs> you could have said no to him. You could have said no. I could have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're the one that said yes. Okay. I do take responsibility sometimes, but it's like, ugh. but after him, like, I don't, I don't, it's hard to deal with a guy like, ugh. Guys are just, ugh. It's like they all want one thing. So I want one thing, shit. And it seemed like, I would say my ex, but like, even after him, like all the guys after him, they all want one thing. They all trying to do one thing. So, hey, why not? Give me some money. <laughs> Is that the mentality in the hood that what a woman can offer sexually is, is basically something to trade for what a man can mm. offer financially? Kinda. Like, this go way back. Like, yo, granny. Yeah. Not yo, granny, but <laughs> they granny. <laughs> They grannies used to give it up to pay that rent. Like, stop playing. Yeah, this go way back. <laughs> yeah. Mercedes, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in, in all of this? You're not out of the woods yet, but I'm sure you're learning things. Um, the most important lesson? It's crazy, because even though I've been through all of this, I still haven't learned to listen. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I am to listen. Like, I don't know. Like, I still have not learned to listen yet <laughs> at well, all. You're young yet, and you're in the middle of your tornado. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. I think you seem to have the desire to figure out a way, a way out. Yeah. And you seem like a smart girl. You'll figure something out. It's like, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's like, I wanna try and change, but I know it'll be hard. Like, I've been doing this for a while now. Like, a while. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't really see myself changing. Like, even when I get older, like, but what's the difference though? Like me depending on like my sugar daddy and then like you depending on like, not you. I keep on saying you, but them. Um, like, what's the difference between me depending on my sugar daddy and you depending on your husband? Like, it's the same thing. Like, we just not married. It's the same thing. He take care of you and he take care of me. Like, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's not that different, is it? No, same thing. But like, people try to make it seem like my sister, she actually calls me a prostitute. I don't correct her or anything like that. Like, I think it's all the same. Like, if you do any type of sex work, like, you could call me a hooker, a prostitute, a hoe, a slut. I don't know. Like, you could call me any name in the book. I just feel like it's all the same thing. Like, I don't really put titles on it. So whenever she tell my, my family, like, yeah, she's a prostitute, like, I don't correct her because like in a way it's all the same thing. Like um I'm want, I'm wanting something in return, just like a prostitute. Like when I like it may not be the same type of way, like I might not get the funds up front or he might not lay the money on the counter in that type of way. But I want that money. <laughs> like I want that money. It's it's the same thing to me. It's hard for a young girl to make enough money to do all the things you want to do. Yeah, like um, everything is expensive 
and then I don't know, like just need money. You wish you had finished college? Yeah. And stayed in college? Yeah. I wish I uh like never had a boyfriend. I wish I like stayed focused. Um I would say like just being around people in general, like having a boyfriend, having friends, which Mark told me to take accountability. But I feel like all of that really like just sent me spiraling. Like, cause I was in college, I was doing good. Uh, well, it I, sounds like you got hooked up with the wrong kind of friends and the wrong kind of guys. And I was in Raleigh and they were back at home. Like, why not stay in Raleigh? Why are you going all the way back home? Like, <laughs> to be with them. <laughs> it just didn't make sense to me. But, uh, You're a smart girl, you'll figure it out. Hopefully, I hope, I hope. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, like I said, the first step to recovery is admitting that you have a problem. Um, I've already admitted that I have a problem. It takes a lot of courage to come up here and do this. Yeah, so my next step is gonna be getting help. Um, yeah. I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you. You're still young. <laughs> Doesn't feel like it, I feel like I'm 30. I got a feeling you're gonna figure it out. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Like, I feel like this world has so much to offer and then like when I'm on those Percocets, I'm just stuck in that one spot. Like, time is going, but I'm still like right there. Do you feel like you deserve a better life, better things out of life than you're getting with this current situation you're in? Like I deserve? Yeah, what do you deserve? I ain't gonna say I deserve. Like, if I deserved it, I would have it. <laughs> have I worked for it to deserve it? No. But when I work for it, then yeah, I might deserve it. But I haven't worked for anything. But I love working for stuff. Like, I don't like handouts. Maybe that's the problem. What? That you're not really putting in the effort. Yeah. But like I said, it's also the, the perks. So it's like, I just be so high. I just, I smoke and go to sleep. Yeah, it's hard to apply yourself towards anything when you're high like that. Yeah. Just go to sleep. But I do feel like, I feel like if I put in the work and effort, then, yeah. I definitely don't want to be at the customer service job for too much longer, but um, I, I know that whenever I go to like rehab or whatever, I'm probably going to quit that job just because, just to get myself together, just to focus on me. And then after I get out of rehab, then whole new start, whole new reset, and I'm going to go from there. So Good for you. Yes, thank you. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good luck with everything. Thank you.